the B&M invert trains, they are below the track rather than above the track, right? And that's not the interesting fact. An invert and the flyer next to each other. Alton Towers says hi. Plus, you get some amazing views of the coaster from the toilets <laughs> because that's how we design parks. I peered into Nemesis Infernos earlier on and took some notes because <laughs> I'm a weirdo. So a normal roller coaster train and I choose to talk about this just as there isn't one in the station. Well done. Hay fever in the UK is still a thing. This is my summer now. <laughs> uh, uh, park whatever. Uh, thumbs up. Well done. Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to episode number six of Chatrolandia. This is our UK park that we're building, very much inspired by Cedar Fair and what would happen if they were to open a park in the UK that was going to compete with Merlin. So in the last episode, this is what we were building. This is Kamunga, our B&M invert coaster. Guys, thank you so much for coming along. Uh, if you're joining me for the premiere, absolutely love having you guys hang out with me. Really do appreciate the company. And of course, if you are new here and you're finding us for the first time, you are absolutely welcome. So this is Chatrolandia so far far this is a big a big deal like we've done a lot of work over the last six weeks or so uh, and this is where we're going to be focusing our attentions down here so i think you probably already know what won the vote it was pretty much a landslide but just in case you don't let's cut to what that was shall we all right then you guys i've got a massive massive confession to make and i'm really 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 sorry this was meant to be a Vacoma Bermuda Blitz, and it really isn't. This is a Eurofighter, and I'm going to talk about why in the extras episode, why I couldn't do it. Uh, the short version is that the uh, mod that's out there doesn't work on my PC, um, and the in-game swapping doesn't create enough combinations for me to actually use, right? So uh, even if I wanted to use the mod, it doesn't work. It crashes my game, and if I were to use the mod, this series would end, and I'm sure I know which one of the two you would prefer, right? So we've ended up with the Eurofighter. Now, the reason I wanted either the Bermuda Blitz or the Eurofighter here is because it needed to be something that was compact and speedy, inverting, but also something a little bit more mid-budget rather than high-budget, particularly as we've put a lot of focus on the flying coaster and the inverted coaster around here right so what i've gone for is a lengthier um eurofighter so more along the lines of takashiba uh, over in japan rather than something as short as saw or rage or speed and so this is what we've come up with this is going to be in the tudor area uh, so the tudor theme one uh, everything so i started to place out all of the buildings where i want them so all of these hopefully will be tudor i've got plans for something up here for a future episode uh, so that's why this is sort of looking a little bit unloved and a little bit barren um, but in terms of the Eurofighter then so we come out of the station um, which I think I just need to adjust the station sizes and everything I've just placed this down just for the sake of it I'm going to come around the first bend uh, and then we of course we come into the vertical lift hill and the beyond vertical drop and then we come into a zero G uh, an inline zero G roll so of course it's heart lined of course of course it is um, and then it comes into a reverse Immelman. So we, talk, we talked about this in the last uh, extras episode. Um, I always tend to do my Immelmans from uh, entering into the bottom and exiting out the top. So I've actually wanted to do it the other way around this time. So I've gone uh, into the top and out to the bottom. Um, and then it comes into this mess right here. So this is a little bit inspired by, like I say, Takashiba and also a little bit of the Smiler um, in the sense that the Eurofighters are so versatile that you can just pack so much into this small layout so we come into an airtime hill it's actually um, an ejector airtime hill rather than a floater airtime because of the way that it is and um, it comes into a turn and into the first brake run so i'm allowing about 20 seconds between the top of the lift hill and the first brake run so that i can dispatch my trains every 20 seconds or so we then come into a really steep uh, drop so it's a, like a um, an ejector drop and then it comes round into uh, round to the corner and into an inline twist so a barrel roll that then comes uh, down the hill slightly, uh, like this, there we go, and uh, it comes into a second airtime hill. And then we come into a pair of Ilmermans. So this one is uh, entering at the bottom, exit at the top, and then it comes round and exits at the top, uh, enters to the top and exits from the bottom. And that's very much sore inspired. Uh, that's pretty much how... Um, that the one two on saw works so i've sort of taken that idea from there then it comes into another brake run here and then it comes round into a helix into a final barrel roll which i wanted to have this as a uh, more of a hang time barrel roll than um a speedy barrel roll and so that's uh, so i can have a bit of path interaction along here uh, and then it comes into a final twist airtime and into the brake run 
So that's the that's the Eurofighter, um, and like I say, this is going to be a Tudor theme. Um, so I'm starting to plan out where I've got all of my resources. So here, for example, uh, it's going to, going to be the maintenance shed that's going to be connected to this uh, part of the road here. For this end, uh, this area in here, it's very small, so I didn't want to put too many buildings. I didn't want to make it feel claustrophobic, and in fact, this building here is a question mark. I don't know if it's going to stay here, because we've got the cattle pen queues that are going to be in here, and they're going to be undercover uh, in some kind of like Tudor-style building. Um, very similar, actually, to how we did Sentinel's uh, entrance way, but the queue is obviously going to be very different. This is going to be the photo booth. Um, of course, it's the, of course it's going to be the photo booth. Uh, this I think is going to be some kind of games unit arcade type thing. Um, I don't think it's going to be food. Uh, I don't think this would be a good place to have it because we've got this massive space at the back here, right? So this is going to be more where you're going to find your facilities, your gift shop, your restaurant. Um, that kind of thing, toilets and, and whatever, will be in this area. Uh, and like I say, I've got plans for a future episode to come up here, and that's why the path comes this way, and uh, I'm leaving a intentionally leaving a gap here, so watch this space on that one. Uh, so then we've just got a supporting ride that's coming in here, and uh, it's going to be the Wave Swinger. I think it's called the Wave Swinger, the Chair Swings um, in here, because it just fits quite nicely with the Tudor theme, right? Um, the other one that I want to put in here, if I can fit it in somewhere, would be the Teacups, um, but I think that's going to come later on with a different theme that I've got in mind. So that's why I've gone for this one here. So anyway, that's a real brief background of the Eurofighter. I'd better do some more decorating and find out some interesting facts about the Eurofighters. So, hmm, how does that turn out? Now, riddle me this. Is this Tudor or is this Bavarian? I don't even know. They share the same building palette, right? So the same construction palette. They're all wooden beams with white plaster and they both occasionally use brick. Uh, they have wooden beams and some of them are uh, in like bent shapes and some of them are straight. So I ran this past some of my English friends and I ran this past some German friends and each one said it was either Tudor or Bavarian depending on whether they were from England or Germany. So I guess the debate is open on that one. Um, all I know is they, like I say, they come from the same building palette. They're just called different things. They just look very similar, right? So you can call this whatever you like. <laughs> here in England, we're going to say this is Tudor. Everything that you're seeing here is all based on uh, Stratford-upon-Avon, which is a, a very, very beautiful uh, town. I think it's a town here in England, you know, the home of Shakespeare. So that's where, that's where we're going with this one. Uh, so yeah, I've also altered the colours of this Eurofighter. It's now white and black rather than black and white. I thought it'd be quite nice to keep this black and white theme, but I just didn't want to keep it the in-game colours, right? So I've reversed them around. And I quite like it as white track, actually. It looks, it looks awesome. So I've got some Eurofighter facts and how these actually work. But of course, uh, I need to be careful what facts I give you for reasons that I'm sure you guys that are familiar with the channel have already worked out. Um, so I've got to be very careful with specifics when it comes to here. So I've, I've trawled through loads and loads of Eurofighter documents and I found the common stuff. And unfortunately, there's not really that much to tell you that's very generic across all Eurofighters, regardless of operator and company and location in the world. But here we go anyway. So your typical Eurofighter contains eight seats. Uh, we already know this, and the minimum ride specification is that it has four seats, so four guests that have to be on the ride. Uh, it can't operate with any fewer than that uh, because of the balance of the trains and because of the way that the, the sensors and everything on the track actually work. Now, uh, these can run in the rain. So unlike other coasters that are difficult and notorious to run in the rain, um, they can run in the rain, but they cannot run in hail uh, because of the way that uh, the track is shaped and the, the, the sheer forces that you put through and everything. But it can operate in winds up to 40 mile an hour. And as long as it's above five degrees Celsius, uh, then you're absolutely fine to run this. Now, just like every other coaster, uh, they use feeder wheels on uh, straight track. And they don't use any kind of feeders on uh, rounded track. Sometimes you'll see there is some kind of movement um, ability on the bends. But you'll tend to find that with a Eurofighter, any bend is on a slight downward uh, incline or decline, whichever you want to look at it. Uh, so, yeah, you, you'll tend to have some kind of a decline that goes around. And that's what keeps the keeps the speed. It's not enough. It, or not enough. It's not much. It's not like it's going to speed up the train beyond anything that's unmanageable. But it's just enough to stop it from stalling from around these uh, around this corner, right? And interesting thing with Eurofighters is that between blocks, there are sensors all the way around the track that actually tells a PC computer exactly 
where the train is. So whereas a traditional uh, roller coaster train would use block sections and the, tr the computer system knows that in this instance it would be somewhere between this block break and this block break which means that it's anywhere along this section of track right. For Eurofighters it's slightly different they have sensors all around and that computer can tell you exactly where that train is and so for that reason if you ever do have any kind of stalling risks you know where you've got especially if you look at this Eurofighter where you've got um the Immelman and uh <laughs> I need to address this in a minute the Immelman and the dive loop uh then see how it crawls around so this would be identified as a stall risk and that's where the sensors would know exactly what that train is doing uh, between that between those blocks so they are actually really 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 clever and the restraint system then on a Eurofighter is also slightly different in the sense that they are uh, in the station they're powered by electricity so as the train comes in here uh, it meets an electrical um, current uh, conductor that's underneath the station here and it sends an electrical current to the restraint. I won't go into the depths of this by the way because this is I'm really oversimplifying this but the uh, essentially the electrical current being present means that the restraints are able to open and then when the operator is ready to lock the restraints they'll turn the current off uh, and then as you pull the restraints down that physically locks it into place. Now that means that without an electrical current present those restraints cannot be opened full stop and that's why evacuations are really really difficult uh, so you do have the ability to send electrical currents um, along sections of track where there are block sections and everything but you tend to not find them on the lift hill so if you have a stall on the on a vertical lift hill it'll, they'll actually roll it back um, and so it will uh, it, like if it's up here for example they will very 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 rarely um, evacuate you from vertical they will actually roll the train back to a safe space and that's where the electrical current can be applied and the restraints can be opened so that's like a, a few real quick details about the uh, the actual coaster itself now I do need to address something that I have been saying that's wrong for quite a couple of episodes <laughs> oh I got it so horribly wrong uh, so these are not called Immel Immelmans these ones where you enter at the top and exit through the bottom they are not called Immelmans despite my protests and my ignorance they are actually dive loops so an Immelman uh, just to clear this up is where you enter at the bottom and exit through the top and it's named after the uh, famous pilot World War One pilot and you've heard me talk about this in uh, one of the Real Up My Ride episodes so you know I know my stuff. I'm not making it up, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they're, they're the moments. And then when you enter at the top and exit through the bottom, it's the same shape, it's the same direction, but they are called dive loops. So um, I'm so sorry, I didn't write down the name who this was. Uh, thank you so much for pointing that out on the, on the chat. Absolute legend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so this is how we're, uh, how we're doing for the rest of the tour then. So I've done the maintenance area. Maintenance area is pretty typical of um, a Eurofighter. This is pretty much how a, a maintenance area for Eurofighter is going to work. And then I've started to use this idea of the wooden beams and the white plaster everywhere because that's just so stereotypically Tudor. Uh, it's like cliche. <laughs> what an absolute cliche. Um, so, but this is pretty much how this is. And like I say, if you walk down the streets of Stratford upon Avon, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful town. Uh, and all the buildings look like this. Now, I've got, I haven't gone for, um, at the moment, very intricate Tudor styling because you find things that poke out and different heights and everything. I'm going to be doing that in the next part of this build. I just wanted to get the basic shapes and everything done. Um, like I say, inside the maintenance area, you've got all your usual clutter uh, going on. So you've got your um, movement stuff. You've got the ride area. You've got the, the track and the maintenance pieces and all of the clutter. And you've got your transfer track here. Uh, so that's all. Uh, that's all around, like here. Uh, I've done the queue line, so I haven't put the concrete and everything down yet. That's coming next. Uh, but I wanted, because this is a massive cattle pen, I wanted it to keep it clear from uh, all the sun and everything. So let's uh, keep our guests safe, especially as we're just like cramming them into a cattle pen. Then we come over to the ride photos. Of course, I've just copied this over from the rapids, um, these screens. But the ride photos, it's getting a little bit difficult to present a ride photo uh, booth in a very different way. Uh, I feel like I just use the same template for everything. Uh, and that's because ride photos are ride photos, right? They just, they are what they are. Um, they're just buildings that sell ride photos. So <laughs> I love, by the way, it looks like Gulpy is just like, just up in the hills. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hiya, mate. Uh, and then we're going to come across to the gift shop. I decided this was going to be a gift shop, not an arcade. Uh, it felt like this area was too prime location to have it as an arcade. Uh, so, I've, of course, I've done all of this. Typical Tudor styling. Um, and this is also very Tudor as well, uh, so I'm, I'm happy with how this is how this is going. And inside, of course, it's just it's just a gift shop, right? Uh, lots of whoops, no, that's <laughs> that's a face full of puzzles. Uh, so just lots of beams and everything on the wall. The white walls, which is just the stucco, that's very typically interior Tudor. You don't decorate inside really. You just have exposed beam, exposed uh, brickwork, and exposed plaster um, in a in a Tudor building. So. This is what we're going for in here. Um, so yeah, typical gift shop. And I've actually made it uh, usable by putting in uh, hats and balloons. And then we're going to come over this way to the uh, restaurant. So this is the biggest part of the build. Um, and this is where I'm starting to use some of the more intricate stylings of Tudor. So like this overhang here. Um, I want And these smaller... Uh, roofing bits along with the larger roofing bits i don't know if i'm going to be able to fit any more like um extension pieces on here i don't know if it's going to work out i need to see what happens here because this is feeling a bit zigzaggy a bit jaggy uh, i need to sort of like play it out and see what happens but on the inside this is going to be a big food unit so this is going to be the uh, center of the park it's going to be serving a lot of guests that are going to be walking through uh, to multiple different areas so as a result you've got lots and lots of lots of choice here it's almost like a world food place you've got fries and burgers and pizza and, and uh, <laughs> brockwurst uh, and <laughs> because I thought the brockwurst by the way was well if we are going to call this Bavarian at least make it <laughs> quintessentially German um, and a bit of Italian with pizza so then I've also put the bar in as well and again, this was coming back from that. Well, if we are going to call it Bavarian rather than Tudor, then let's just go with it. Let's make it a bar. <laughs> so that's what I've done here. Your usual bar stuff. Uh, you've got your tea bars. You've got your tills. Uh, you've got all of your stuff in the background. You've got your ice machines, your fridges that are built into the back bar. Um, I like all your bottles on, on the side and everything. Do you know what? I, I quite like this. This this is this is one of my favourite bar builds, I think. Uh, because it's just... It's really simple, but it's really, really effective. Um, just zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so... And then, of course, the ceiling's going to come down to this bit, right? So, uh, you're not going to see all of the pokey-outy uh, pokey bits. So, that's pretty much all I've done... Um, other than like some starting the, the landscaping and stuff just to make things right. Uh, so I'm actually going to need to do a massive tidy up piece before the final reveal. So how does that final reveal turn out? Here we go then guys, it's time for the done finale stamp to come out, not least because I'm running out of time, but also I'm running out of Tudor things to do. So, <laughs> I'm like, no, we need to put a stamp on it because I need to start doing the outside and everything, so you know how that how that goes, right? So, Pendle Peak has officially opened to the public, and thank you so much to Evapostorms12 over on the community tab. You won the vote this week by quite a lot, actually. Awesome, awesome name. Pendle, by the way, being the witches in the Tudor times, so that's what we're going for here. It's kind of like a spell conjuring theme going on um especially around henry the seventh henry the eighth not going to make this a tudor lesson because you know whatever but that's why you can hear all of that beautiful english style music in the background as well very twee very cheesy uh, and this is how it's all come together i love how this has come together it's it's like a proper village it's it feels like an actual village a tudor village it feels like stratford upon avon it really really does um so yeah i'm gonna be honest i completely struggled with this when i first started i thought i was going to need to ditch ditch it but you know making a promise to you guys on the vote to say that this is going to be the theme i was like no i need to stick this out and play it out and this is this is how it's turned out my favorite thing by the way is the fact that it hides itself on the landscape so you don't actually know it even exists and because it's down a hill so like from up here you're at a high point you're probably about a third of the way up the lift hill from here you're looking down into the ride area down into the maintenance area um from here and you don't actually realize just how impending this or how imposing this actually is uh, it's quite high and it's not until you actually get next to it down here that you actually realize just what a beast it actually is is so yeah i love i really like how this is how this has turned out the logo by the way uh this one here i just wanted to keep it really really simple really really cheesy it's a witch's hat and of course it's got the track uh, and then pendle peak just being the the ride name right so unfortunately i'm not spike so i can't do <laughs> decent uh ride signs but this you know it does it does what it needs to do i like it it's like it's cool um so the queue line from the background here really does now fit into this enclosed space 
uh, again, I was a bit unsure with how this was going to turn out. I didn't know if it was going to be any good, uh, but actually works out perfectly. It works out just fine. Um, so yeah, so that once you get through the queue, then you come to the station. I've kept the station theming and everything very loose because the idea is it's supposed to be the Tudor theme, not anything like fairy tale or witches or, or anything like that. But there is a few or there are a few things that I can show you. So when you come into uh, this part, you get a, a video on the screen. Um, you've seen this before. I used it in Curse of Drake for Manor. But I just wanted this this idea of the video uh, multimedia because it's obviously a modern park and everything. And then we come into the station and then you get another video, a massive, massive projection wall, which is that grass. Again, Curse of Drake from Anna from Raygate. You've seen it before. Uh, and then, oh, hello. Uh, over on this side, then we have the, just a reminder that you're about to go on to Pendle Peak, just in case you'd forgotten. And then the witch against Curse of Drake from Anna. Um, but because it's obviously Pendle, I wanted this idea of the witch. And so this is the video that I used in the pre-screen uh, area of Raygate Lake. So if you saw the channel, channel 5 um, preview, you didn't actually get to see it because the media didn't load for them. Um, so this is this was the video that was in here anyway. So uh, yeah, it looks cool. It looks good. So in here, I just wanted to keep it open beams, uh, as little theming as possible, but as much detail as you can uh, in terms of a station. Uh, so what I didn't say in the last update, uh, because I hadn't quite put them in, is that Eurofighters tend to have the heaters underneath the station. So that's why they put in here. So at night, that glows red. Uh, and the heaters, the idea of the heaters is that it wheels the warms up. Uh, wheels the warms up? Oh no. <laughs> it warms the wheels up so that you can uh, run the trains in slightly colder temperatures uh, so that it lubricates, uh, it warms up the lubrication and, and, and everything. So. Yes, that's what she said. Behave. Uh, so we're going to come over to the ride photo area then. So as you leave, uh, the ride photo area is now done. Um, just some final touches and everything that I've done in here uh, just to make it come to life. And of course, I've put all of the relevant ride photos in from the ride photo point. And so, yeah, this is this is looking really nice, actually. Um, like it just looks proper Tudor. This is how I this is how I envisioned this ride photo shop to be, and the gift shop turned out way better than I thought it was going to. It's the trademark of the series. Uh, so this is it from the outside. You get an awesome view of the first drop from here, uh, and also of the zero G roll. And then you just get this get this gift shop. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering where all the guests are, uh, I've actually reduced the guest count in here because it was starting to drag the frame rate down when I was doing recordings and everything. So we've now only got I think it's 800 guests in the park. So that's where they've all gone. They ha they're not like hating this roller coaster and, and not deciding on going. So we're going to come inside the gift shop. There we go. Uh, and then we just have, just change my camera, uh, then just have all of the clutter and everything on here. Um, nice and simple design, uh, but lots of exposed beams, lots of the uh, white plaster, the white uh, exposed walls and everything. Um, yeah, I didn't put any music in here, by the way, because it's quite a small space. So the music would just reverberate around and it would be a bit um, unbearable. Uh, so, yeah, I just decided to keep the, the music at bay. But, of course, it's everything that you'd expect a gift shop to be, right? Um, all of your shelves lined up with all of the tat uh, that the park's selling. And, of course, it's functional uh, in-game, which we already know. We've seen that already. So then along the ride area, because it was all sunk into a into a hole and um, I want to keep the hill in the background, but I want to then bring it back down again for the next parts of the park. Um, I just wanted this like to, it to be really clear. So I've kept this clear of trees and uh, as much shrubbery and foliage as I can, uh, because this would whoop, this would be look like quite a well kept area. So but also difficult to access. So it does have trees and shrubbery, but I just wanted to keep it clear so that you can see the whole mess of, of track that's going on here. And then we've got uh, Gallow Swing. So I've just put in the, the name and everything. Forgive the stuff in the background. That's what I've been filming for, or will be filming for the extras episode. Uh, so yeah, Gallow Swing. It's just a, a su supporting ride. If I'd have known what the ride name was going to be in advance, I would have actually put the Witch's Spoony ridey thing in here. But actually, this works just as well, especially as it's very medieval England right so it just works of course it's got all of its signs and everything outside and the ride pad uh, I've decided to do another like trickery thing with it so the ride pad of course comes all the way out here but I've noticed that when the guests load they don't use the bit around the back here so it felt like it would be wise just to cut it off uh, in line with the queue line here so that's all I've done and I'll just put some flower beds and everything in just to break up this concrete pad a little bit lots of color of course no trees because it swings out right so it's a collision risk so you don't want to be killing your guests like I say this is not a murder park um and then we've got Henry's 
so Henry's itself uh, is obviously Henry VIII, Henry VII being the Tudor times. Uh, so I just thought it'd be nice to, to give it a bit of a personality and a bit of a name. Um, now, we saw that in the last update anyway, right? So you know that already. Uh, but then when we come in here, it's now all kitted out. It's actually the first time I've been able to use the proper fairy tale benches. I've never used them before, but they fit really, really nicely in here. It just gives that very regal, very royal vibe uh, to it. And then we're going to come over here to the bar. So the bar, I've just done all of the final touches and, and touching up on it and everything. Uh, there's a light package, which, of course, you're already familiar by now. I'm going to show you in the extra episode on Thursday uh, how that light package and everything works out. And we've just come over this way and lots of other tat and clutter and stuff that's, that's going on over here. Uh, that's a... That's actually a column. That's a pillar. <laughs> and then we've got a uh, a nice little seating area uh, over here with just a bit of clutter. Again, I wanted to keep this a very clean looking area because you don't really put much on walls of Tudor places because either they're listed um, and you can't put stuff on the walls or they're not actually strong enough to host much stuff because they're, you know, because there's construction and everything. Uh, and then just on the outside, I just wanted the idea of a town square uh, that just gives an awesome view of, of the actual... Whoops! Of the, didn't press T uh, just of the drop and everything so uh, there you go and then of course you've got the zero into the zero G and the last thing to tell you really about the coaster uh, is that it's been custom supported in certain places and that's why there's some like really weird supports uh, I kind of checked out how Eurofighter supports and everything work and I realised that actually there were a few places that the in-game ones just weren't quite cutting it. So like the dive loop, the M1 ones and this zero G roll just needed a few custom supports and of course where the uh, the path and everything had taken had taken those out. Um, and so guys that's that's everything to show you on the tour. I'm going to put some glamour shots in at this point uh, because you obviously you know that's the end of the video and you want to see that stuff. Uh, so guys, thank you so much for getting to the end of the video. I just need to let you know that there isn't going to be a Chaturlandia episode next week. Uh, it's going to be something different and you've probably already seen the premiere that's coming up on another channel. Uh, so it's it's related to that. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to take a week off YouTube. I've been doing this solidly since uh, March last year uh, and I've not taken some time off. So I've got some friends coming around. I'm going to watch Eurovision. I'm going to enjoy that like a nerd um, and I'm going to take a week off. So Chachalandia will be back in two weeks, but next week there will still be something. You'll, you'll, you'll have something to look at. Similar style episode, similar style everything else. But yeah, thank you so much for getting to the end of the ep episode. If you have found this uh, interesting or if you ha like, have liked it, then please leave a like, leave a comment, come over to the community tab and say hi. Uh, you're all absolutely welcome. I love chatting to you all. Uh, but guys, until we speak again, of course, look after yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, before I go, let's go for a ride.